There's a couple of new features from OpenAI inside ChatGPT that are really worth paying attention to. They may seem small, but they actually have huge implications in OpenAI's long-term plans. All right, I wanna tell you exactly what that means. The two new features being more prominent links and the ability to browse and use ChatGPT without an account. All right, let's jump in and talk about what that all means. What's going on? If you're new here, my name's Jordan Wilson. I'm the host of Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people learn to leverage generative AI. Learn and leverage it, right? That's what it's all about. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please let me know with a comment if this was helpful. And also go to youreverydayai.com and sign up for that free daily newsletter. All right, let's take a closer look. So uh, OpenAI just, announcement, talk, just announced this talking about how they're making links more prominent inside of ChatGPT. So specifically what they said is we're making links more prominent when ChatGPT browses the internet. This gives more context to its responses and makes it easier for users to discover content from publishers and creators, browse as available in ChatGPT Plus, Teams, and Enterprise. All right, so let's talk real quick about what that means and do a quick example. Okay, so I am just in my account. I'm gonna zoom in here. I obviously have a ChatGPT Teams. Uh, is what we use. So let me zoom in. And I am just in uh, ChatGPT4. Uh, I'm asking about 2024. So presumably, uh, ChatGPT is going to default, use browse with Bing, look for um, you know restaurants that the top 10 new Chicago restaurants that opened in 2024. So uh, again, chat, uh, ChatGPT's for GPT4 Turbo, the cutoff is April 2023. So if I'm asking about uh, 2024, presumably it's going to use Browse with Bing. Uh, I might have to uh, prompt it, but it looks like uh, as we see it go here, it looks like it's um, doing it on its own. Sometimes you have to prompt ChatGPT. Sometimes it'll understand. You can do the exact same prompt 100 times and get you know many different responses. All right, so here we go. Uh, it's giving uh, a list here of, we'll see if it's 10 new. Sometimes ChatGPT wants to go to five and then stop. I just used a very simple prompt. So we'll see if we actually get all the way to 10. So, so far, it looks like it is uh, just pulling everything from the same blog post, which is interesting. Uh, for this one, it's pulling uh, for uh, Tradita, whatever that is. It's pulling, uh, it's pulling it from two separate sources. But for the most part, which is pretty interesting, it's just pulling it from this one post. So let's go ahead, open this post. Because another problem that ChatGPT has had for a long time since Browse with Bing came out is not uh, correctly linking to the source. So let's go ahead, let's click the source and see if it is actually correct. All right, so it did, and let's just see. So I'm curious here if it just lifted it straight. So uh, I'm looking at some of these. Um, so we have La Serre, we have Tradita, we have Umo, we have Fioretta. So let's see if it's just kind of pulling, which it kind of looks like it is. It's just pulling uh, more or less a lot from just that one blog post. All right. So I'd have to go through and double check. It looks like it's pulling a, a good amount from that one blog post, and that is it as its source. All right. So here's why this is important. Well, number one, they fixed this issue. Uh, we use, uh, our team uses uh, ChatGPT, specifically Browse with Bing. Um, and, you know, different uh, GPTs, previously plugins to browse the web, summarize the web. It's one of the best things that I think that you can do if you know how to use it properly. It's going to save you so much time and you don't have to deal with, you know, dozens of ads on a single web page. This page is actually not too bad for Secret Chicago. All right. So that's number one. Number two, this has huge SEO implications because uh, so many online publishers were suing OpenAI for uh, essentially scraping its content and not giving attribution. So this, even though uh, OpenAI isn't saying it, this is at least one step in the proper direction uh, for citing things. And this is giving uh, much more of a perplexity feel, right? Because uh, if you've never used uh, perplexity before, let's just go ahead and you know use the exact same uh, prompt here inside perplexity, right? Uh, presumably we're going to get something very similar. However, I do think that with perplexity, it's going to source many more sources of information where it looks like for the most part, chat GPT really just relied on one blog post and kind of sourced this second one. 
Uh, but for the most part, it, it, it seemingly looks like it just really sourced one blog post. So if we go to perplexity, uh, let's see the difference here. So it looks like there's a lot of sources. It looks like there's 20. Uh, a good chunk of them look to be Yelp, but it looks like there's at least uh, nine or 10 separate sources, 20 total sources uh, to get the top 10 new restaurants for 2024. So little, little different here uh, with this new feature inside of ChatGPT. Again, this is as uh, OpenAI is facing this giant lawsuit with the New York Times. I'll put that, um, that episode in the, the notes here to this video, it's worth checking out. Uh, it looks like OpenAI is, is obviously trying to forge more partnerships to cut down on the amount of future lawsuits for, you know, essentially using all of this information scraped from the open web without attribution or without citing the source. So a uh, pretty big move there. So that is number one. Number two is pretty quick here. So the second big update also with SEO implications is you can use now, chat GPT without an account. So I actually have a, um, let's just go ahead and uh, move myself here so you can see. All right. So uh, you have now the ability to use chat GPT uh, without an account. So if I use the exact same prompt, it's not going to work uh, because I'm asking about 2024. And if you aren't using an account, uh, you are cut off at the, um, the knowledge cut off for the free version of uh, ChatGPT, which is ChatGPT 3.5, which has a knowledge cutoff of 2022. So I'm going to do the same thing, and let's just say 2021, and presumably uh, we will get a, a decent list here, right? But there's no sources because it's not accessing the internet in real time. So both of these are actually pretty big plays. Uh, these are both pretty big plays uh, from ChatGPT specifically for SEO. I think this is actually not quite shots fired. Uh, at Google in perplexity, but uh, presumably I think ChatGPT is in OpenAI is seeing the writing on the wall um, that a lot of people, a lot of users are flocking to perplexity. And this is also a shot at Google, right? I've been telling people on this channel all along, whether it's ChatGPT, whether it's Google's uh, search generative experience, SGE, whether it's perplexity, you should always be using an AI uh, powered search or an AI powered chat before you are just browsing the internet in a traditional way. If you want to really learn to use and get the most out of generative AI, this is the type of searching you should be using. So I think that OpenAI uh, saw the writing on the wall with these two new uh, these two new features, being able to use uh, ChatGPT without an account. It's obviously going to drive signups, but also they want eyeballs, right? Uh, everyone wants eyeballs. That is the attention of the future is being able to show how many users that you have. All right. I hope this was helpful. If so, please go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for that free daily newsletter, and let me know what you think. Is this a big SEO play trying to get more eyeballs for OpenAI? Thanks, y'all.